Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I, you know, that's one of those things that God does just to encourage us in our faith. Here's another one. Angels protect sleeping child. I had only been a Christian about two months when I decided that it was time I put my daughter, then about two years old, in her own room in a bed by herself. I had always had her crib in our room, but as I was expecting a second child, I needed the crib and knew also that she was too big to be in the room with mommy and daddy. When I first put her in her own room, she cried every night and often fell out of the bed. This was very upsetting to me and I was troubled about it, but did not know exactly how to handle the situation. The only thing I could do, of course, was go to the father. That night when I put Nikki in her bed, I knelt down to pray with her and for her, and the Spirit gave me the utterance. I heard myself say, and as the Spirit gave me the utterance, I heard myself say, Father, I give the angels charge over this loved one to protect her and keep her from falling out of bed. I got up to walk away, and the Lord bade me to turn around and look. And I saw two beautiful angels bending down right where I had been, very deep in conversation, and watching over my little girl. I walked away with a deep knowing that my problem was solved <laughs> by the Lord God, and never again was I troubled over it, and Nikki never fell out of bed again, and never again cried to come to bed with mommy and daddy. This is the incident that has taught me to pray for the ministering angels, to minister to the heirs of salvation, and praise God, I have been using this key ever since. Isn't that terrific? It's a very edifying book. If you're, if you're ministering to people who are young in the Lord, you know, or even if you haven't yet, get a vision. Gather people into your home. Do a Bible study with them. This is a powerful one. Here's another really good thing to minister to people. Heavenly portals and the co coming storm. A prophetic call from Psalm 91. This is by Linda Hartzell, who is on our staff. And it's uh, returning to the f heart of the Father to see his manifest glory in troubled times. It's a very powerful book. And it's all based on Psalm 91 and the, the provisions of the Lord in Psalm 91 for those who will dwell in his secret place. Now, Sister Gwen, oh, here's one more. This ISOM has been going on for a long time. Some of you, this is your first time. But this has been going on for a long time. And when Sister Gwen was teaching the epistles of Paul, her syllabus became a book in each case. And this one is called Mystery Revealed. It's an in-depth Bible study on Ephesians for the serious student of God's word. Now, I trust that you are here because you are serious students of God's word. So if you haven't gotten these books to study, uh, I think you're really going to really like them because they are they are really good solid meat and you know all of the all of the looking up of things in strong's concordance and and all those things and illustrations are in here uh, it's really very good and she, she takes it verse by verse line by line the whole book of ephesians so this is a really good resource material for you now, Sister Gwen mentioned uh, Amy Semple McPherson's book last night, This Is That. I never had time to read This Is That. I still hope to. I still plan to. But I read this one. This is sort of a condensed version. <laughs> and, and we have just a few copies of this one. So if you didn't get This Is That and you want to get something, wait and see if the other ones come in first. But this is also very moving, and it was very life-changing for me. Uh, you know, I can't gauge it by Sister Gwen's life-changing experience by reading this as that, but this one was life-changing for me. Um, here's another man that, that God used mightily, and I think Sister Gwen might talk about him. Um, Jonathan Goforth was a mighty man of God in China. He was a missionary in China. And round about the time of the Welsh Revival, he got that kind of a baptism in the Holy Spirit. I don't know if he spoke in tongues or not. But he got an infilling that filled him with evangelistic power. And I think there were miracle power. There was miracle power too. And it, it, 
he's he's one of those special people on on God's agenda. Another special person that went home to be with the Lord recently is our beloved sister Doris Swartz. She was on our board of directors for a number of years and a friend of Sister Gwen going back into the 60s, I think. And uh, traveled, they traveled together some in the nations. And for years, Sister Gwen was nagging Sister Doris, when are you going to write a book about your message, find, find me in the spirit? And, you know, Sister Doris would say, well, you know, yeah, I'll get around to it. And finally, Sister Gwen said, if you don't do it, I'm going to write it. And so Sister Gwen wrote, a, preached the sermon herself and then wrote one of those sermon booklets on it. Knowing, we call it knowing one another in the spirit. Well, Sister Doris finally did write it. And after she passed on, her son published it. So here it is, Find Me in the Spirit. I haven't actually had a chance to read it myself. Thank you. I would expect it to be good because it was a deep, tremendous message that, that was really an important thing for us all to get. So Find Me in the Spirit, this book. And, and she also wrote another one. And I haven't had a chance to read this. Have you read this one yet? Okay. Okay. It's good. Do you want to give us a little brief on either one of, of you? Uh, where's the microphone? Philip? Oops. I heard him say oops back there. <laughs> Okay. Give it a second. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. If you need to have a new look at what it means to really be a leader, you have to be a servant first. And this book will give you practical ways to be a real servant leader. And, and Sister Doris Schwartz was truly that. Yes, yes, she modeled it for us. And it's called Curtain Pullers, a ministry guide for balance. She was always, one of the things that Sister Gwen always said about, about Sister Doris, come on, worship team, one of the things that Sister Gwen always said about Sister Doris is she's so practical, she's so balanced, she's so down to earth. And, and that's what we need to be. I, I'm convinced that we can only do in God what we need to do is if we have our feet firmly on the ground and our heads firmly in the heavenlies. And then, you know, you might just raise up a little above the ground too well, because you just get carried away. That can happen. And we'll talk more about that in another class. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot, okay. Mary Lois. It's okay. Sister Doris was also a fun lady. She was. And we, we went to Honduras with her. And uh, <laughs> we were up in the mountains and had to get to, the, uh, to, where, she was, uh, to where we were via the river and riding open, open boats, you know. And so on our way down, on our return trip down, there she was in this hot pink pants and and a straw hat and a loud yellow and pink shirt i'm telling you she was she made a commanding presence going down the river negra i just wanted to remind you um ladies hannah howe lydia williams and verna graybill are on lunch duty today and you will uh, make sure you get on the first van going uh, to back to Bethlehem for lunch. I'm going to ask you to um, uh, pray with me. And um, our little grandson, Benjamin, um, Stephen in Maryland, our son Brian, uh, little guy, is facing a surgery tomorrow uh, morning at 730 for a second set of ear tubes 
and to have his adenoids removed. So let's stand together and let's pray and then we'll be ready to worship. And I know uh, some of you have needs in your families and we do not want to ignore that. And if any of you have any loved ones that are in need of healing, we stand together in agreement in Jesus' name for healing for them as well and uh, just trusting the Lord. But Sherry called yesterday and she said, I know you're in school where you'll get everybody to pray. And um, based on that scripture that we heard Sharon read, uh, he said his angels charge over us and um, uh, that, we are, uh, that the angels minister to the heirs of salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up little Benjamin, our little Ben, and ask you to set your angels with him and surround him as he goes uh, tomorrow morning at 7.30 uh, for this procedure to put those ear tubes in. Father, we just decree that he is the healed, yea, he is the healed of the Lord. And Lord, as they ministered uh, the general anesthesia, we just ask, oh God, that there'll be no ill effects. Uh, we bring the blood of Jesus to bear over Ben. And we just trust you, God, for that perfect balance and, and his body will recover quickly. And we declare no more ear infections for this little guy in the name of Jesus, bringing the precious blood of Jesus to bear over it. And Father, I lift up all my dear friends friends, all the ISOM students and their families, and that they're believing God for healing in some measure and in some way, Lord, for themselves, for their loved ones, for their children, their grandchildren. Father, we just believe, oh God, that you are the healing God and that you sent your son Jesus uh, to fulfill Isaiah 53 as the prophet Isaiah looked down from the portals of time, oh God, through the realm of the spirit to see the crucifixion, oh God, and he spoke those powerful words. By his stripes we were healed. Father God, we bring that whole power powerful prophetic look and that prophetic word to bear over us all and all of our loved ones. We trust you for it now and give you all the praise. Give him a shout of praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that your life is hidden in yes. Christ this morning? Yes. How many of you know that in Him we live and move and have our being? Yes. Praise God. We're going to celebrate that fact for a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Woo! We praise you, Lord. Life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, my life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, my life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, and I will praise you with all of my life. Come on, tell him. I will praise you with all of my strength, with all of my life, with all of my strength, all of my hope. strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, my life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, my life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you. 
praise you with oh, all of my on. life. Come on, do you really mean that? Tell him. And I will praise you with oh, all of my come on. strength. Come on, just get out of your seat and praise with him this morning. all of my life. Hallelujah. With all of my strength. All of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength. Is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you. Get the drums, come on. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you. Is in you, Lord, my strength. You are is my in hope. You, Lord, my hope. Oh, is in yeah. you, Lord, in you. It's in yes, you. Yes, my, my life is in you, Lord, my strength. Is in you, you are my hope. Oh, oh, is in Jesus. you, Lord, in you. One more time, come on. My life is in you, Lord, my strength. Is in you, Lord, my hope. Lord, in you, it's in you, in you, Lord. Come on, come on, give the Lord a praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We just praise you this morning, God. We yes. thank you our life is in you. God, we just thank you this morning, Lord, that we live and move and have our being inside of you, God. You and us, and us and you, Lord, and we are one with you this morning. Come on, how many of y'all are thankful that you're one with the Father, just like Jesus was? Come on, we're one with Him. That is something rejoicing and to celebrate over, amen? <laughs> Woo, praise God. Come on, we're just going to talk about the beautiful name of Jesus for a little bit. Is that all right with y'all? Come on, we're going to exalt His name in here this morning. Oh, yes. Jesus. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Son of God, Son of Man, oh, Lamb that was slain. Joy and peace. I love your name, Lord. What a beautiful name. Son of God, Son of Man, yes, Lamb that was slain. Joy and peace, you're my strength. Oh, 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 grace that drives my 
Let's sing verse one again. Come on. Ooh, Jesus. I love your name. What a beautiful oh, yeah. name. You're the son of God. Whisper verse one. Come on. Jesus, you're the name, the strong tower. Oh, in my midnight hour, I run, I run to your name. You're the son of man. When I can't even get up and keep going again, Lord, you raise me up. Christ, my fears away. He's your comforter in the midnight hours. Come on. He picks you up when nobody else is there to pick you up. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We exalt your holy name this morning, God. Oh, we exalt you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Come on, say, I love your name, Jesus. Come on, there is no greater name than the name of Jesus. Come on. Yeshua Mashiach, there's no other greater name than his name. We praise your name, Lord. We invoke the power of the name of Jesus in this place this morning. I just declare and decree a healing virtue flowing from the name of Jesus into everyone today, God. Whether it be spirit, soul, or body, God, we just we draw upon the power of the name of Jesus right now, God. Oh, 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 oh. I love your name. Come on, say, I love your name. Oh, I love your name. Oh, 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 there's no other name whereby me can be saved. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I exalt you today, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, Jesus. What a beautiful day. One more time. Come on. I just love saying his name. Son of God. Son of man. Lamb that was Come on, saints. He's divine. We're the branches. Oh. Joy and peace. You're my strength. Strength and hope. Grace that drives my fears away. I just want to take a moment and say, What a beautiful name! Oh, 
Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Lord. We praise you this morning, God. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're raising up a body of worshipers all across this world, God, that understand the name of Jesus and understand who you are, Lord, and who we are inside of you, God, and you and us, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, there's been a line being drawn right now. And we say today, we choose to be worshipers foremost, God. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand. And I want to be standing by your side. Holding your hand. So let your kingdom come yes. and live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters see. Come on, you're a son and a daughter today. Proclaim this. I'm surrendering my all. Surrender to the King. Ooh. Father, I hear it growing louder. The song of your redeemed. As the saints from every nation are awakening to sing. From our hearts it comes an anthem. Oh, hear the heavens ring. This is our song. The song to our King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters see. Oh my God, I surrender my past, present, and future. I surrender my all. I surrender to the King. Let the worshipers arise. We hear the call. And the sons and the daughters We choose to worship you in spirit and truth, God Even offer up a sacrifice of praise, God oh, I surrender to the King You know, Peter, the book of Peter says It is now time for judgment to begin in the house of God how many of y'all understand Jesus over in the book of, of Luke? He said, look, I didn't come to earth to bring, uh, to bring peace. He said, I came to bring a sword. Yes. How many of you understand the sword of the Lord is coming right up the middle of the yes. church? Yes. It's coming right up the middle of every person's lives. And God is drawing a line and He says, no more compromise. No more lukewarmness. You're going to be hot or cold. And say to God, there's a call going out. And He's saying, those that are going to be red hot on fire in these last days must first of all be worshipers. So I want you to say, God, I answer the call. I hear the call, God. God, I'll worship you no matter how I feel or what it looks like around me, God. Let's sing that verse one again. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand. And I want to be standing by your side. Holding your hand, so let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my dream. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters see. My God, I worship you, Lord. I'm surrendering my own. I surrender to the King. Yeah, yeah. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sun Hallelujah. Oh, I surrender in my all. Oh, I surrender to the King. Now I want you to sing it without any music. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. <laughs> I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to my King. Let the worshipers all rise. Let 
the sons and the daughters see. I surrender my will, Lord. Oh, I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the King. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the call. Come on, tell him, say, I answer the call to be a worshiper, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Sharon, are you ready? You want us to continue worshiping? One more. All right, another 10 minutes. Praise God. We can show enough to sing more. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of you feel His presence this morning? Yes. Come on, I mean, really. Come on, if you don't feel His presence, just throw your hands up and your head back and say, God. I need a fresh feeling of your presence today, Lord. And just breathe him in. Come on, breathe in the Ruach. Come on, breathe in the Holy Spirit. Just say, fill me afresh in a new Holy Spirit. I breathe you in like Adam did. We just breathe in your presence, Lord. Oh, yes. This is my desire, tell him, to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Come on, that means the good and the bad. Just offer it to him today. I give Come on. You Come on, he's not looking for perfect vessels. He's just looking for yielded vessels, saints. All that I adore is in you. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Oh, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, Lord, have your way in me. Come on, tell him this is my desire. This is my desire. Come on, surrender your will afresh and anew today. God, I'll go wherever you tell me to go. I'll say what you tell me to say, and I'll do what you tell me to do. No matter the price, no matter what it costs me, God. I worship you. No matter how who falls off my life, God, I give you my life. All that I have give you praise. I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Yes. Lord, I give you Oh, I give my, my soul, God. Come on. I live for you, oh, every breath, every breath that I take, Ooh. every moment Come on. I wake. Come on, he hears you this morning. He's aware of you. Come on, he sees you. He hears you. Come on, just tell him, I hold nothing back today, God. God, I give you my spirit, my soul, and my body, God. I give you my will, Lord. God, I'm not going to try to figure out how to do it anymore, God. God, you just do it, Lord. I'm just your vessel. Oh, come on, let's make a fresh surrender of our will this morning. Come on, he's a great God. He's a great God. Come on, saints, when we let God out of the box, 
inside of us and in our lives, the miraculous begins to take place. Woo! <laughs> Come on, we can't figure God out. <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, this is my desire to honor you. You will honor him through our obedience. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Lord, I give you. I give come on. Come on, give him your life, your breath, your anointing, every part of you. All that I adore is in you. Oh, Lord, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my future. I, give you I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to do it all. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, oh, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, we just say, have your way. Have your way in us today. God, have your way in this school of ministry. God, have your way in our lives, our families, our futures, our destinies, God. God, apart from you, we are a dead, broken off branch, God. So, God, we surrender our will and we stay connected to you today, God. It is your will, not our will, but thy will be done, Lord. Not our will, but thy will be done, God. Come on, I just sense that there's some of you that are facing some major decisions, major life turning decisions and the spirit of God just says today just just surrender your will to me be sensitive to my voice and to the signs around you it is my good pleasure to lead you into the fullness of your destiny we praise you Lord Yes, I surrender my all. I trust you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Come on, just tell him I trust you, Lord. It may be hard to trust a God you, you feel like you can't see, but how many of you understand He's closer to you than your very own right hand? Put your right hand up in front of your face. God's closer to you and He's more real to you than this hand that you can see in front of you. He's the creator of that hand. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. We exalt you this morning. You want us to continue singing? We can sing some more. <laughs> Sharon's a little floaty right now. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just stay in His presence. Come on, your heart's right for the mysteries of God to be downloaded through the woman of God. Come on, I want you just to raise your hands and say, God, download the mysteries today. Open me up, Lord, and I ask you just to download me from the libraries of heaven this morning. This scripture from Song of Solomon came to me just now as we were worshiping the Lord. The Lord, chapter 4, starting with verse 12. A garden enclosed, I'm reading from the Amplified. A garden enclosed and is barred is my sister, my promised bride. 
a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates, or a paradise with precious fruits, henna with spikenard plants. Spikenard and saffron, colors and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. You are a fountain springing up in a garden in a well of living waters and flowing streams from Lebanon. You have called me a garden, she said. Oh, I pray that the cold north wind and the soft south wind may blow upon my garden, that its spices may flow out in abundance for you, in whom my soul delights. Let us say this together to the Lord. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat its choicest fruits. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Come into your garden today, Lord. Each one of us. We open up our gardens to you, Lord Jesus, and we welcome you. Oh, mighty King of glory. Mighty King of glory. Mighty King of glory. Mighty Creator of glory. Everything that is, is because you are existence exists because the great I am is We welcome you to show your majesty. We delight our souls in your presence. Like a good soaking bubble bath. We just want to luxuriate in your presence, Lord. Soak us in the oils of your presence, just like Esther was soaked, Lord, and anointed and anointed and rubbed down and just soaked in the oils to prepare her to be the bride. Soak us in your presence, Lord. Help us to focus so you can soak us. That sounds like a Judith Moore saying. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow, what wonders. What glory. You are so wonderful, Lord. We're so great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shay. Perfect. Appreciate you being there and just flowing in the spirit. Ah, I sure appreciate this worship team. The ministry, their ministry is called Embracing the Fire. And I think that it's very appropriate that they're here. Because that's what we want to do. We're hungry for the fire of God. And we just embrace your fire, Lord. You are the consuming fire and we embrace you. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's turn in our syllabus to page seven. Point number three, and talk a little bit about God's wonders. Our subject is God and Son's wonder-working company. And we have to remember that He's the CEO. He's the one that calls the shots. If we keep Him in His right position, then everything will go right. How many of you were at the World Convention a few years ago when Cameron Yarai was with us from, uh, from Iraq. Iraq? No, Iran. Iran. I was going through, I, I started with Ireland. And <laughs> okay, he's from Iran. And, and he's one of these marvelous, marvelous converts from Islam that was converted because he had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is discipling him. That's, I like that, you know? I, we, we, we need to kind of step back a little bit and get more of that ourselves. Let Jesus disciple us himself. You know, we, we have such resources of books that we can read and all this stuff online to learn things about God and, and he just really would like to disciple us himself if we'll just tune in and listen. And, and so anyway, when, when the Lord was speaking to Cameron, one day he said to him, Cameron, I am the first and the last. If you don't put me first, it won't work because it's contrary to my nature. Shall I say it again? I am the first and the last. If you don't put me first, it won't work because it's contrary to my nature. So that's why we have to put God first. We have to start our day with him, start our life with him, start all of our projects with him, start everything with him because he's the CEO. He's the number one. When he says, I am that I am, that covers all existence. Yes, yes. Everything exists because he spoke it into existence. There isn't anything that exists that he didn't speak into existence. You know, I don't even like to talk about the dark one. But he exists because God spoke him into existence. And, you know, he has worked so hard to make himself so big. I will be exalted. And he has exalted himself. And he's exalted himself into our fallen mind's understanding. And God wants to break us out of that. Because <clears throat> Satan only got any kind of authority because we bought the lie. And if we'll quit buying the lie and start buying the truth, ha, the sky's the limit. And we saw how big the universe was yesterday. And, and beyond the universe, it's still God. So he's limitless. And God and Son's work, wonder working company has limitless boundaries. I mean, uh, no, wait a minute. There is no such thing as a boundary that's limitless. There is no boundary. There is simply no boundary. God himself is the boundary. And he's limitless. So let's take a look at his wonders. I was uh, the first. The first thing that I that I wrote down in the syllabus was Exodus three twenty. But I got to thinking this morning. Well, were there any wonders before God started talking about wonders with Moses? 
I ca- came up with a couple of thoughts. You know, in the book of Genesis, we have the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Nobody had ever seen anything like that before. And, and of course, we have the wonder of the birth of Isaac. It was impossible. Nobody had ever had a baby at 90 years old before. At least, at least after the flood. There may have been before the flood. We don't know. That, that part wasn't recorded. We don't know how old Eve was when she quit Barry. Did she only have those three children? I doubt it. I mean, the wives had to come from someplace. <laughs> but we, let's not boggle our minds with that. If the Bible didn't tell us about it, it's probably not all that important that we know. That's right. And if he wants to tell us, he will. I'm, I'm not limiting him. But, you know, the birth of Isaac was a huge, huge thing. And the reason why Ishmael happened in the first place was because Sarah and Abraham thought, we've got something impossible here. Abraham walked with God. Abraham was God's friend. And everything that that God said Abraham believed and acted on. But I, maybe it was just Sarah that was the big problem because you know, she was the one that suggested take my handmaiden. And he said, okay. <laughs> I don't think he was, it was too hard to persuade him. But we won't go into that either. But the bottom line is that, that God's wonders are things that have never seen, been seen before that make us wonder. Oh, wow. Okay, Exodus 3.20. God is talking to Moses and, and talking about what's going on in Egypt and how he's going to set the people free. And he says, And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. You notice it was the word, the word wonder with an S on it. It was plural. You know, Pharaoh was not moved by the first, in, the first you know, appearance of, of Moses in his court. And he throws down his, his uh, staff. And, and, you know, Pharaoh's magicians throw down their staffs. And, you know, he got a bunch of snakes in the court course Moses's rod ate up the other rods but <laughs> you know it, it, it still wasn't that impressive because because the magicians could do those kind of wonders that had been seen before wasn't that big a wonder I mean it was a wonder because the average person couldn't do it but it wasn't that big of a wonder and 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 then let's just go there let's look at Exodus. Okay, the next thing that happens is he turns the waters into blood. And it, it, just, it just amazes me that here's all the water turned into blood and, and Pharaoh has his magicians turn some more water into blood. Wasn't there enough? <laughs> I mean, it was already ruining their lives. They couldn't drink it. The whole Nile was blood. And, and he has them turn some more into blood. You know, they must have had to dig some out to turn it into blood. The river stank. The Egyptians couldn't, couldn't drink the water of it. But, you know, Pharaoh's magicians could do it, so Pharaoh turned, uh, his heart was hardened. Okay. Plague of Frogs, chapter 8. In verse 7, it says, The magicians did so with their enchantments, as if there weren't enough frogs. <laughs> we got a problem. Let's have a little more. Go figure. I mean, what made them think that way? I don't know. It, but it was, it was challenging, challenging. This is a duel between gods. This is a duel between the gods of Egypt and the one God, the one true and living God of the children of Israel. 
The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created it all. And so we have this duel going on. And as if there isn't enough trouble, they make more trouble. Okay? And then, then it's just amazing to me. Pharaoh calls for Moses and Aaron. Verse 8 says, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. The frogs that the magicians made too, I suppose. <laughs> and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, or have this honor over me. When shall I entreat for thee? This is so funny to me. When shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs or to cut off the frogs from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only? And he said, tomorrow. <laughs> Why didn't he say yesterday? I don't get it. I just don't get how could Pharaoh... Well, I guess it's because he was Pharaoh. Okay, the plague of lice. And the lice was everywhere. And verse 18, And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, and remember this, this is the finger of God. This is the first place where the magicians start to say, okay, this is something bigger than us. It took three wonders to get to that point where the magicians couldn't do it. And beloved, in the days to come in God and Son's wonder-working company, there are going to be people that can do amazing wonders because they've connected to something spiritual, but it's dark. But they will only be able to go just so far with their enchantments. And the God who created it all is going to prove himself. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Because he's the CEO. He is number one. He's the first. And you notice he says he's the last. Because there isn't any final number. You can just keep adding numbers to the numbers. It starts with one. <laughs> And it just keeps going. I found a website that told the names of, of these great big numbers. You know how many zeros? 64 zeros, it, it's got the name for it. But you can still add more to that. You can just keep adding zeros. What's zero? It's nothing. But God, somehow out there, He's also the last. Even though the numbers keep on going. He's somehow the last. And we can't even begin to get that one in our heads. I mean, you could just sit there and boggle for a while on that one. There is no last from our point of view. But he is the last. He's the first and the last. And what he starts, he finishes. What he starts, he finishes. He started a good work in you. What's he going to do? He's going to finish it. He's going to perfect it. He's going to bring it to maturity. He's going to bring it to fruit. Glory to God. For the, for the folks that are watching this on DVD, I was pointing to this. Thanks for following. He's going to bring it to fruit. He's going to bring every seed that he has planted into fruit. He's faithful. Okay, let's look some more at his wonders. We'll never get through this if we don't. Swarm of flies. They, they couldn't do it. God did it. Animals die from this plague, this moraine, as it's called. But not in Goshen. Oh, this, the, oh, let me go back. Let me go back and make this point. The plague of lice was the one 
thing that, they, that, the, that drew the line. And the magicians couldn't do it. The swarm of flies was the first one. After that point, God began to put his hand over Goshen so that the plagues that were on Egypt no longer affected them. Now, is it possible that, that the other, th- the first three, that maybe, um, maybe God didn't let those things come into Goshen and the magicians sent them into Goshen? I never thought of it that way before. Perhaps that's the reason why from thereafter it wasn't in Goshen because the magicians couldn't do it back to them. God did it to the Egyptians, so the magicians did it to the, to the Israelites. Perhaps that's how it was. Okay, so the animals die, and then they've got boils, and then there's a plague of hail, and then there's a plague of locusts. And all of these things are to, so that they may know that the earth is the Lord's. So that they may know that God is God. And that's the purpose of wonders, beloved, is that we may know Him. And that the earth may know Him. That all the inhabitants of the earth may know Him. This is about evangelism. This is about knowing God. That the inhabitants of the earth will know Him and bring Him honor. Because every knee shall bow. Whatever it takes, the sooner we bow, the better. It's the truth. Then they have three days of darkness. And every one of these plagues is challenging one of the gods of Egypt and showing that they are nothing. And this, this three days of darkness was challenging the Egyptian sun god. Yes, someone said Ra. That that was his name. Now I would like to propose to you that God is still wanting to deal with that spirit that magnifies himself. And if you go into the the, uh, history of Freemasonry, you'll find that Ra is out there in their lore. And all, the, all these spirits of Egypt. Oh. And God is going to undo this Egyptian spirit in this nation. He is going to undo it, even if it means sending these kind of plagues all over again on this nation until the hardened heart of Pharaoh finally lets his people go. Because there's, there's all that kind of nonsense in our foundations. And God is going to shake everything that can be shaken until that which cannot be shaken is all that's left. Did you notice that uh, about a year ago there was an earthquake in Virginia and Washington, D.C. was shaken? And that today you still can't go into the Washington Monument, which is none other than an obelisk, which is uh, connected to Freemasonry. And it is the phallic symbol of the sun god. Okay, God is allowing darkness to challenge the spirit of the sun god who is really a spirit of darkness. And God is going to shake this nation with his wonders. And we have to be ready to stand and stand And trust that the living God is going to protect his people in Goshen. Say that again, Mary Lois. Goshen Goshen provision. That's right. And then at some point, there's a Passover. 
And God is going to pass over his people to protect them because of the blood. You know how, how, how when, when they put the, the blood on the lintel and on the doorposts, they would have gone like, like this with the hyssop, put it up on the lintel and put it on the doorposts. And what kind of a sign do you have? It's the sign of the cross. Beloved, we have protection in his presence. We have protection in knowing him. And the more we know him, the more we can extend the atmosphere of, of the presence of God. And, and people can come in under that protection. The Lord is, is wanting to show his wonders and, and use his people to bring deliverance to the needy to bring deliverance to the children of Israel that are that are we've been captive in Egypt and God wants to set us free that's his that's what his wonders are all about he doesn't do them well I guess he does them for any reason he wants to <laughs> a friend of ours in uh, in Poplar Bluff years ago she's an end time handmaiden a dear black lady that she said, Honey, God do what he want to do. <laughs> and I have said that ever since. Honey, God do what he want to do. And it's the truth. God do what he want to do. And whatever pleases him, he has a purpose for it. And it's a good purpose. It's good for us. And he, we can trust him. We can trust that it's his love that is at the base of it. We talked about that yesterday. Moving on. We've got to move on. Okay. This word wonders is pala. Or pala, probably. And I've, I've, I took the time to put these um, Strong's Concordance things in here for you so that, so that you don't have to try and take notes fast. But I'm not going to read the whole thing. It just the word pala means to be marvelous, be wonderful, be surpassing, be extraordinary, separate by distinguishing action. And that's what these wonders did in Egypt. It was a distinguishing action to show who Jehovah is. That the that the I am that I am is way far surpassing Ra and all his gods in Egypt. Thank you, Father. To be uh, beyond one's power. It's beyond, it was beyond the power of the Egyptian magicians to um, do all these other things. From the lice on. They couldn't do it. To be beyond one's power. Di be difficult to do. Be difficult to understand. You know, that's why we're, they're called wonders. And you sit there and you wonder. <laughs> what did he do that for? But he had a reason. Like, like that thing that we read yesterday about, you know, why, why did they have to make my sandwich again? Because the person who made your sandwich in the first place was sick, and I didn't think you could afford time off of work. God has a reason for everything that he does. And we just need to trust more and more and more. To be wonderful, to be extraordinary, marvelous. Now let's look at letter B, Exodus 4.21. And the Lord said to Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. Now this was a different word for wonders, and it's, <laughs> I, I like to use the last pronunciation that's in here, mo faith. Don't you think that's good? I mean, that only works in English. It won't work in other, in other languages. 
It just requires more faith. <laughs> okay, so that means a wonder, a sign, a miracle, a portent, a wonder as a display of God's power, a token, a sign, a token of a future event. Exodus 15, 11. Oh, I love this scripture. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I say it all the time. Who is like unto thee, um, O Lord, among the gods? Amen. Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? I, I ask the question, who is like unto thee? And I say, nobody. Because there's nobody. Nobody's like unto him. Nobody. Nobody, 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 nobody. There is no one like our God. And I love this, this word, Pele. It means wonder or marvel. A wonder, an extraordinary, hard to understand thing. A wonder of, of God's acts of judgment and redemption. You find the same word in Isaiah 9.6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yes. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Well, I was fascinated with this and I wanted to know how is this translated in the Jewish Bible. So I found... Uh, a Jewish English Bible, and here's what it says. For a child is born unto us, a son is given unto us, and the government is upon his shoulder, and his name is called Pele Joez, uh, not Joez, it would be Yoez. Pele Joez El Gibor Abi Adsar Shalom. That's how they say it. They just don't translate it. But I was excited to see the word Pele. It's wonders. And so it's translated into English, wonderful. And we know that Jesus is the wonderful. We, we think of it as, a, as an adjective, a wonderful counselor. But he is wonderful. He is full of wonders. They, God was prophesying to the children of Israel that I'm going to send a wonder worker among you. I'm going to send a miracle worker. And he will not only be a miracle worker, he will be a counselor to you. And he will be the mighty God. And he will be the everlasting father. And he will be the prince of peace. Jehovah Shalom in the flesh. You know, coming up, I, I grew up in a Christian home. And, and you know, I was indoctrinated and I don't say that in a bad way I appreciate my roots I appreciate my roots but I got not only the word pumped into me I got tradition pumped into me and understanding pumped into me that wasn't necessarily complete Okay, you understand where I'm at. Some of you are the same. Some of you came from a completely heathen background. And, and it's, a, it's a whole different story for you. But this is where I came from. But somehow in my childlike understanding, I grew up thinking that Jesus was the Son of God. And I didn't get it that he really was God. That he really was God in the flesh. Then it, I, it, took, it took, you know, years of just living until one day when I, when I read it in the book of Revelation where he said, let's look at it. Book of Revelation chapter 1. He's standing before... John, 
And he says, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. And I got the download. I got it. He really was God dressed in flesh. He wasn't somehow lesser than the Father. He was the Father incarnate. He is Pele Yoez El Gibor Abi Ad Sar Shalom. He is wonderful. He is counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace, the Wonder Worker. And everywhere he went, he had this atmosphere of peace around him. In the storm, he just stood up and said, Peace, be still. And it was. Just like when he said, let there be light. And it was. Peace, be still. And it was. Just like he said. Hallelujah. Now, I want to just read to you from uh, the lexical aids in the uh, Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible. This word Pele comes from 6381, and that's the next one here that I've listed. It is a miracle, a wonder, a wonderful thing, a wonderful deed, except for in Lamentations 1.9, Pele always appears in a context of God's acts or words. Of the 84 occurrences of the root and its derivatives, 37 of them are in the book of Psalms. And Pele points to the extraordinary aspects of how God dealt with his people. His miracles. And then it mentions about his name shall be called Wonderful, comma, Counselor. He's wonderful. He's full of wonders. And then the word that it comes from is pala, to be separate. He's holy, you know. His wonders display his holiness, his separateness. He's way far and above us. And yet, he wants to live within us. And that's why he tells us to be holy, because he's holy. He's separate and he wants us to be separate unto him. Amen. To be separate, be distinguished, be singular. He is one. Be extraordinary. Be wonderful. Be miraculous. Be astonishing. To be hard. To separate. Consecrate. Make extraordinary. To act miraculously. To sanctify. Did you ever think of sanctification as something miraculous? If you've experienced it, you know it is. Sanctification, being set apart unto God, a separate act, a separate act of the Holy Spirit beyond salvation that takes us from being saved into being holy, being set apart, being consecrated unto the Lord, belonging to Him. It, it goes from, from salvation where it deals with forgiving your sins into the place in sanctification where you get free from the sin nature. This isn't taught in our churches anymore. We need it to be taught in our churches again. We need to understand the principle of there is freedom from the sin nature. And it is miraculous because we know how the sin nature has ruled us. And if we've still got any sin nature in us, just in case any one of us has any sin nature left in us, there is still that miraculous power available to us. We can have it. We can have the download. Let's tarry in His presence. Because that's where we'll get it. 
Hallelujah. Oh, and I love this, this little part here. Um, it goes on to say, wondrous things, miracles. The basic meaning is to be wonderful and to cause a wonderful thing to happen. It's first occurrence. And, and you, if you're new to being in Bible school, this is called the law of first mention. Which means that when you're looking for an understanding of the meaning of a word, you look for where it's first found in the scripture and you start there. So here's what God says. Is anything too hard for the Lord? This is where God is speaking to Abraham about Sarah laughing at his word that she would bear a son. God says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too miraculous for God? We've got to get our minds set free from the bondage of our understanding of what's possible. Is anything too hard for the Lord? The answer is, no. I couldn't hear you. No. Say it again. No. I'll ask the question one more time. Is anything too hard for God? No. That's more like it. Now look in the mirror and say, is anything too hard for God? What about those besetting things? Is anything too hard for God? No. Never has been. Somebody bought a lie. And it's usually the person in the mirror. What can I say? I don't know about the person in your mirror, but I know about the one in mine. But the mirror lies to us. Did you know that? The image that you see in the mirror is not really what you look like. For one thing, it's flat. You know? It's just a piece of glass with silver behind it or something to make it reflect. For another thing, what appears to be your left is really your right. What appears to be your right is really your left. That was driven home to me when I started parting my hair on, on the side, you know. And then I'd look at a photograph of myself and I'd say, that doesn't look like me. Because a photograph will tell you better what you look like than your mirror will. So don't trust your mirror. It's lying to you. It's not really telling you the truth about yourself. <laughs> you got it, didn't you? <laughs> God wants to take us into his word and look at the word to see who you are. Look at the word to see the truth about yourself. The enemy of our souls keeps replaying to us about our weaknesses keeps replaying to us about our failures, keeps replaying to us about our sins, when God forgave them. When his strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh, well, it, okay, I'm weak. Let's celebrate it. Because there's a place where God can whoosh in and do a wonder. He's miraculous. Is anything too hard for God? I don't think so. All right, let's look at the New Testament. New Testament words for wonders. Okay, I think just about everybody knows the word dunamis. It's the word that we get dynamite from. It means really, really powerful, doesn't it? Strength, power, ability, inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Ooh. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Beloved, the nature of God is present in his presence. 
Did you invite him to come and live inside your heart? I did when I was six years old. Doesn't matter how old you were when you asked him to come and live in your heart. He came to live in your heart. And he has the fullness of the Godhead bodily in him. And he's in you. The divine nature. His power is inherent in him because it's part of his nature. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth. Power for performing miracles. Moral power and excellence of soul. That enables you to say no to temptation. It takes dynamite power to deal with temptation and to say no to it. One of the greatest overcomings I ever experienced in my life when it came to temptation. One, one day I was just feeling that, that overwhelming thing of temptation to do something coming on me and I hit my knees. I hit my knees and I started to pray. Oh God, oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. And all of a sudden, whew, yes. that darkness dispersed and it was gone. It was gone. And he'll do that for us if we'll just hit our knees or whatever it takes to get in contact with him. That's what it took for me in that moment. Whew. Yes, the blood of Jesus. Moral power and excellence of soul. The power and influence which belongs to riches and wealth. Power and resources arising from numbers. In other words, you've got a really big army, so it's got power. Power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, or hosts. And then the next one is from the lexical aids. I, I did the strongs first, and then I think it's the enhanced strongs. Um, the notes are in the back, by the way, that tells exactly where everything came from. Let's move on. Uh, Matthew 7.22 Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. That's the same word, wonderful works, miracles. Haven't we done those things in your name? What does he say? I never knew you. So it's not about doing wonders. It's about knowing him. That is the focus that will soak us. Knowing him. Because it's not about doing wonders. This isn't about Anne's, son's wonder working company. This is about God and sons. This is about relationship that produces wonders. Moving on. Thaumasios. It means wonderful and marvelous, wonderful deeds, wonders. The chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did in Matthew 21, 15. And the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And they were displeased. That they saw that they were wonders. They were really wonders. Here's another word, teras means a prodigy, a portent, miracle performed by anyone. Ye men of Israel, in Acts 2.22, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved by God, approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. The miracles and wonders and signs showed that Jesus was approved by God. And that is what is going to come to pass when the sons start doing the miracles. I mean, there are, there are miracles being done. I'm not saying that there are not. But we're going to see bigger, more amazing miracles to be done. Okay, Megalios. 
means magnificent, excellent, splendid, wonderful. Indicating great works or miracles contemplated as outcomings of the greatness of God's power and glory. That's what it's all about. That these miracles be an outgrowth of God's great power and glory in our relationship with Him. In His residence in us. Acts 2.11 Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Luke, Luke 1 49, for he that is mighty hath done to me great things. It's the same word. And, and it comes out of his greatness. Then there's the word semion, sign or miracle with an ethical end and purpose. They're valuable not so much for what they are as for what they indicate of the grace and power of the doer or of his immediate connection with a higher spiritual world. And there's some references there that you can look up in your spare time. And doxos, glorious, splendid. Works or miracles in which the doxa, glory of God and the Son of God shone forth manifestly. And then there's paradoxos. It, that, and I love this one. It means beyond opinion, beyond doxa. Doxa means glory. If you've studied the word glory, you understand that, that the word doxa is the word that's used in the New Testament for glory. But it, the word doxa also means opinion. And I pondered that one for a little while. And then I realized that it's our opinion of him that gives him glory. So we give him glory because we've agreed with, we, we have this opinion of him that he is glorious. So we give him glory. Hallelujah. Paradoxos. It means beyond opinion or beyond expectation. Something beyond one's expectation, a miracle. In Luke 5.26, it's used to express new things, miracles not hitherto seen. And thus beyond, beside and beyond all opinion and expectation of men. Thaumasios, wonderful things, miracles as provoking admiration and astonishment. That's what wonders are. Hallelujah. Now let's talk a few minutes about some of God's wonder works. He started with light. And that was his first wonder. And then he put the stars in place. And the whole of creation. I don't think we're going to take time. But you can take, take time and study. How he said let there be light and there was light. How he said let, the, uh, let the, the waters be separated. And they were. Everything that he said happened. He just said it and it happened. He does miracles by speaking. And as I said yesterday, that's why we have to be careful what we speak. Right. We must speak that which is going to bring forth something of value. When we speak about failure, when we speak about weakness, when we speak about uh, whatever we speak about, we're setting up because we were made in His image. And what we speak... If it's negative, there are negative powers out there just ready to help make this happen. They just, the, the whole spirit world gets involved in causing our words to come to pass. So be careful what you say. The power of life and death is in your T O N G U E. Help us, Jesus. The more we have the gift of gab, the more we have to walk very circumspectly. God help us. But he's into doing miracles. And he's into sanctifying tongues. That's why he gave us the gift of tongues with the Holy Spirit. 
to help get our tongue fixed. If we'd spend more time speaking in tongues and less time speaking negative things, boy, would we be different. If you find yourself about to say something that you shouldn't say, just start in tongues instead. And I wouldn't be surprised if it will help to reverse what we've said in the past that shouldn't have been said. Glory to God. And I think one of God's great wonders is His covenants. He is a covenant-keeping God. Have we ever, in all of the years since Noah's day, seen a flood that destroyed all of the earth? No. We've seen some small floods that have devastated, you know, miles, areas, large areas sometimes, but never the whole earth. You know, every now and then a, an island might sink. But he's, he hasn't, he promised, and he gave us the rainbow as a token of the covenant that he keeps because he keeps his covenants. He's faithful. He's true to his word. He cannot go back on it. It's even better than the law of the Medes and the Persians. He keeps his word. He is faithful. His covenant with Abraham. He's still in the process of keeping it. He still promised. He promised the land for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in the lifetime of some of the people in this room, what didn't look possible became. And Israel returned to her own land. The same land that God promised. There was a discussion in, in the United Nations. Oh, let's, let's give the Jews a piece of Uganda. That ought to sat satisfy them. How funny is that? A land with which they have no history? Well, that didn't go very far. But it was suggested. But no. God saw to it. God saw to it that in his time, in his way, his people have been returning to his land. And there's always been some of them there. Don't think that there wasn't. There's always, always been a Jewish presence in the land of Israel, even when it was under Turkey and, and the Ottoman Empire and the Roman Empire, there's always been some Jews there. Even when they, the Babylonian captivity, there was always some of the people. It was probably the poorest of the poor. But they, God kept his covenant. And beloved, this whole idea of a two-state solution in the Middle East is such nonsense. Do you know... Do you understand that this area that they call the West Bank and this area that they're, they're trying to negotiate with people who call themselves now Palestinians and believe, beloved, hear my heart. I am not against these people in my heart. Okay, they are beloved of the Lord. But they've bought a lie. You know, 70 years ago, the only people calling them Palestinians, calling themselves Palestinians were Jews. Before the land of Israel became a nation. Again. They called themselves Palestinians. The Jerusalem Post used to be called the Palestine Post. Yeah. Do you understand, though, that the name Palestine in the first place was put on the land by the Romans who were so angry with the Jewish uprisings that they never wanted the name Judea ever to be there again, or Israel. And so they named it for the earlier inhabitants of the land, the Philistines. 
That's where the name Palestine comes from. Philistines. If you, if you listen to the radio in Israel, in Hebrew, and they're talking about the Palestinians, what did, word do they use? Philistini. Philistini. Who are we talking about? What spirit are we talking about? Okay? But this whole land that they're, that they're trying to negotiate to give to these people who are of Arab descent, who 30, 40, 50 years ago were calling themselves Jordanians, from the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. And, and before that they were calling themselves just Arabs. Never called themselves Palestinians until after 67. 71. Yeah, it was Arafat that started this. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that this area, within this area, are the places where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had their altars with God where God made covenant with them. And God is a covenant-keeping God. And if we as a nation continue to put pressure on Israel to divide the land with these people... You know, God doesn't mind them living there if they will just submit to his rule. It's okay for them to live there. We don't need to drive them out. They just need to, they just need to know Jesus as the Prince of Peace and they'll get peace in their heart and start to love their Jewish brother. Right. We've seen it happen over and over and over and over and over. But God is a covenant-keeping God. And He is going to send destruction anywhere to any nation that is enforcing this division of His land. It's His land. It's not Israel's land. It's God's land. And He makes it very clear that He doesn't like dividing His land. Now he'll, he will cause the land to vomit out the inhabitants thereof if they're not living right. Yeah. But it's God's land and we've got to recognize that it's his land. He's the CEO. He's the king. He's the Melech HaOlam, the king of the universe. So we've got to, we've got to keep him in his right place. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he's a covenant Keeping God. And I'll, I'll just make one more point on this subject. Do you remember the uh, forcible exit of the so-called settlers from the Gaza Strip? Yes. These were Jewish people, most of them Bible-believing, and I'm referring to the Old Testament, but they, they loved God, they were serving God, they read the book, the book said, inhabit the land. So they went and inhabited the land. They built homes, they built cities, they built farms, they built wonderful places for growing things. And then they were forcibly removed because of one of these agreements that was put in place because of the pressure of the United States of America. Okay? Do you know that the very day, within 24 hours of the day, that those people were forcibly removed, Hurricane Katrina was spawned off of the coast of Africa. And when it hit our Gulf Coast, it displaced per capita the same percentage of the population from our shores as we're displaced from Gaza's shores. So what's going to happen when the United States of America forces the issue to remove the settlers from the West Bank, so-called West Bank. It's really Judea and Samaria. God calls it Judea and Samaria, the mountains of Israel, the place where he made covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What's going to happen when we remove those people? Prophecy after prophecy has said there'll be a dividing in America. 
And we've got this wonderful fault line in the boot heel of Missouri called the New Madrid Fault. The last time it went off in, in a, the 1800s, was it? 18 what? 1812? 18, was it? 18 what? Okay. For three years it went off? Is that what happened? Anyway, the first time that it went off in the 18, late, early in the 1800s, it rang the church bells in Boston. And the Mississippi River flowed backwards for how many days? A while. Made Real Foot Lake. It was a whole new lake. Doing wonders. God does wonders. And he's going he's gonna to make a new Grand Canyon right down the middle of our nation. If we divide their nation, he's going to divide our nation. And we'll have East America and West America. If at all. There will be destructions, beloved. Doing wonders. Why? Because God wants us to understand who he is. That he's the CEO of the universe. He's the king of the universe. He is the one who runs everything. And we have so ignored him. And he wants to do wonders to get our attention. And we need to be in place, beloved. Doing what we're supposed to be doing. Letting him flow through us. Letting him do wonders through us. Letting him extend the atmosphere of his presence to bring people into safety. Hallelujah. Well, we've talked some about God's miracles already. But here's one of his great miracles is redemption. Redemption. He redeemed the children of Israel from Egypt. He used the firstborn of Egypt, the blood of the firstborn of Egypt to redeem Israel. Whew. Scary. But he's into redemption. He's into redemption and that's why he came himself in the form of his son. And then we have God's, the three O's of God. Omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence. He is all-knowing. We're not all-knowing. Sometimes we think we are. <laughs> but we're not all-knowing and he is. He is all-knowing. He is all Powerful. He's omnipotent. And he is all present all the time. Omnipresent. Now let's take just a moment. How are we doing for time, Philip? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Okay. Let's just let's just get started with what is a son. We I think we understand. God's in charge. He is the CEO. He is the king. So who are his sons? The Hebrew word for son is ben. And you've got the, the name ben-ami, meaning son of my people. Ben-oni, son of my sorrow. Remember when, when uh, uh, Rachel was birthing her last child and she died in childbirth. As she was dying, she named him ben-oni, son of my sorrow. But Jacob named him Benjamin, son of my right hand. If you're, if you're going down the, the street in a taxi in, uh, in Jerusalem and you want to say, turn right, you tell the taxi driver, Yamina, Yamina, Benjamin, son of my right hand. And then the, the Aramaic word is bar. I couldn't understand why sometimes you had bar and sometimes you had ben. Bar is Aramaic. And so you've got in the New Testament the names like Simon bar Jonah or Yonah. Simon bar, no, bar Yonah. Bartholomew. Barnabas. You know the name Barnabas? Son of Consolation. Okay, now here's the words in the New Testament, in the Greek. Technon. John 1, 11 and 12 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power 
or the right or the privilege to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. And that word, that word technon means offspring or children. It could mean a child, a male child, a son. It could also mean daughter. The name transferred to that intimate and reciprocal relationship. As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become sons, to have a reciprocal relationship going back and forth. A reciprocal relationship formed between men by the bonds of love, friendship, trust, just as uh, between parents and children. There ought to be love and trust between parents and children. If you didn't have it, there's healing for that in your relationship with your Heavenly Father. It can mean an an affectionate address, such as patrons or helpers, uh, teachers and the like, employ my child. My child. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. You know? My child. That's what this means. But it's not necessarily referring to... um, referring to the... um, Mature son. It just, it's relationship. It's relational. To them gave he power to become the children of God, you might say. It's the same word that's used for the children of Israel in, in the, the New Testament references. Okay? And then we have a diminutive of technon, which is technion, meaning little child. And when John writes in his epistles, my little children, that's the word that he uses. Then we have the word yos, which is, um, it refers to son and a descendant and used to describe one who depends on another as his follower, a pupil, a son of man, son of man. That's, That's the word yos. And it's also the one that is used for son of God. Always Jesus is, is referring, it, he's, he, it, the, uh, let me start again. The, this word yos is used for Jesus as the son of man and as the son of God. It's always referred to as with this, with this name. So um, it's also used for Adam in Luke 338, used to describe those who are born again. And it can refer to it can refer to mature sons, okay? So who are the sons of God in Scripture? I think we will start with that tomorrow. But I just I want to go back and review. I want to go back and review that word that we listened to at the end yesterday. And I would like for you to read it with me on page 7. Page 7, letter E. Because I I really feel that God wants us to get this so deeply in our spirits. So that he can use us the way he wants to use us. All right? Letter E, Stacey Campbell's prophetic word, don't shrink me. And we're just going to start where it started. Do you see where where I am? In the syllabus? We're going to start with two places so deep. So read it with me. Oh, and, and remember that we, that we had that correction in here yesterday. The word baskets needs to be bank accounts. All right? To places so deep. To creatures that the eyes of men have never seen. Or when you go into the galaxies and see systems, solar systems planets, and galaxies that the eye of man has never seen. Don't shrink me. Don't shrink me to what you can do. I am inviting you into what I can do. And a reformation of a nation and of a planet will not happen if you shrink me to what you have and what you can do. Don't shrink me. Just believe me. I am Jehovah Jireh. I can multiply fish. 
I can multiply bread. I can fill bank accounts. I can make water come out of rocks. So don't shrink me. Your nation will never see reformation if you shrink me. Now I invite you to gaze at the mountains, to stare into the stars, to stand at the ocean's edge, and you will clearly see my divine nature, my eternal power. And I invite you, come out on the water. Walk on water with me. Walk through walls with me. Be translated from one place to another. What do you believe about me? Who do men say that I am? You can do anything, but don't shrink me. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to give us a fresh download of your divine nature, a fresh upload from your presence within us. Hallelujah. Lord, sanctify us in this area that we will not shrink you ever again. Father, we repent for shrinking you. And we bless your name. Let's just bless him. Let's just bless him. Speak of his wonders in tongues. With him, Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. Amen. And amen. And amen. And now in the name of Jesus.